so we'll be discussing about the various aspects of precocious puberty in boys using a lot of these case scenarios as well as uh, the different aspects of evaluation and management in these regards which becomes relevant from that uh, perspective. So uh, precocious puberty as we were discussing is something which is rarer in children as compared to the uh, adult population as compared to the female uh, in compared to the boys will have uh, lesser chances of having precocious puberty but once they have precocious puberty there is a greater risk of developing uh, a pathological cause in that regards and that's something which is important to understand from that perspective so we have this five-year-old boy who presented with early puberty and we can see clearly pubertal development was there and there was a level of LH and FSH which were not elevated. So usually we expect this to be a central precautious puberty where you have a high level of LH and FSH. And when we found that the LH was low, the first possibility which we considered was obviously in line of an adrenal disorder which was excluded based upon our adrenal imaging as well as a normal level of 17 hydroxyprogesterone. What was striking was that the HCG level was high and this turned out to be a HCG secreting tumor and this really highlights the importance in that perspective of identifying a pathological cause because this then turned out to be a CNS lesion, a germinoma in the brain which was producing HCG, causing precautious puberty from that perspective. So precautious puberty in boys is less common compared to girls, but still 1 in 100 theoretically will have precautious puberty. The problem is identification is not that easy because parents will come to us immediately if they notice any breast development or vaginal discharge in boys, these changes will not be very, very evident. And that's why it is uh, often not detected at the light time. A significant proportion of them, approximately half of them may have a pathological cause, which is there from that perspective. So it's rare but more likely to be pathological as compared to girls and more likely to have a peripheral etiology as compared to girls in that perspective. All of you can go to have a look at our website, learning.growsociety.in, which has got a lot of uh, informative resources uh, as well as courses which are there in terms of pediatric endocrinology, including our fellowship course and the pediatric endocrinology for postgraduate course. We do have frequent activities in the form of journal clubs, in the form of uh, discussion PG lecture series from that perspective, there are publications including our basic, advanced and protocol book and our mobile app which provides uh, guidance with regards to different aspects of pediatric endocrine disorders. So in this lecture series, we will be covering the pathophysiology, the etiology and the assessment and management of uh, precautious puberty in boys and at the end we will have very interesting uh, Q&A session in which we will try to cover whatever we have discussed. So uh, this is a four year, two months old boy presented with uh, enlarged penis and testis. Testicular volume is 5 ml. SPL is around uh, 8.5 centimeters. So uh, the LS level is 2.2. So uh, is it a central or a peripheral precocious puberty? So you can all put it either in the Q&A or the chat. Are you able to see the Q&A in that? Yeah. So anybody has put the answer? Okay, so you can put in the answer. So we have got uh, one answer in Q&A. This is central from Dr. Vivek. So I think we agree with this one. Yeah. Since the LH is more than 0.2, so it is a central precocious puberty. Yeah. So this is right. So a lot of people are talking about central, which is uh, fine. Dr. Aisha... Dr. Vedita, Dr. Tabusum Khatun, all of them are talking about. So this clearly the message from here. The message is, is that uh, whenever there is a precocious puberty, uh, we have to go for the LS level. If the LS level is more than 0.2, it is central. And if it is less than 0.1, we are dealing with uh, peripheral precocious puberty. Okay. Yeah, carry on. So the next, next, next case scenario is we have a five-year-old boy. He is concerned about the enlarged penis. The testicular volume is one ml and the SPL is nine centimeter. So the LH is 0.2. So uh, since the LH is 0.2 and there is the testicular volume of one centimeter, that means uh, we are dealing with a peripheral precocious puberty. And in this case, the CT, uh, 
abdomen was done which showed a uh, diffuse adrenal hyperplasia and the 17 hp levels were 120 which is significantly high so we are dealing with the case of 21 hydrolysis deficiency so Yes. So what are the pointers towards peripheral precocity is what we are looking at. So what are the pointers in this case which suggest that we have a peripheral precocity puberty? So what are the pointers that you saw here? So uh, in this patient, uh, there was enlarged penis, but the testicular volume was prepubertal, first of all, yeah. uh, which gives a hint towards peripheral precocious puberty. And again, uh, the LS level was uh, very low. It was uh, less than 0 0.01. So it is a peripheral precocious puberty. So Dr. Anju has clearly said LH level less than 0 0.1. Dr. Vivek has mentioned both LH and testicular volume. Dr. Ekta, I think testicular volume is something which is very, very characteristic yes. in this regard. So... Uh, Yeah. That will be the clue for CH as well. So yeah, carry on with this case. This is a three-year-old boy. He has uh, increased penis and testis size. The SPL is uh, 9 cm and TVO 4 cm. So just hold on. So what do you think are the possibilities here? We have this case whose SPL is uh, increased quite significantly and TV is only 4 ml. So maybe you can, people can put it on the chat box. The options which are there are the Q&A. Uh, meanwhile, you can carry on with the case. So the in this case, the LH was uh, 0 0.01. So definitely it is going to be a, a peripheral precaution puberty. So there is a discrepancy that we are seeing here is that we have got uh, SPL which is 9 centimeter and testicular volume is 4 ml. Uh, Dr. Anju is talking about hypothalamic hematoma. Yes, that is a possibility as Alapan had mentioned that because you don't have that much time for testes to grow, it may happen. Or germinoma also, HCG producing tumor. That's pretty much there. So 17 OHP here was normal and HCG was HCG high. was uh, 1200. So we are dealing with a HCG secreting tumor. And uh, to locate the tumor, we have done uh, imaging in which the CT head shows uh, CNA germinoma. So the definitive treatment is radiotherapy. Yeah. So I think that was clear. So we will now move to the next case. Six years old boy. He had a rapid uh, pubic hair growth. SPL is 9 cm. Uh, testicular volume bilateral is 1 ml. And bone age is same as the chronological age. So again, this is an interesting scenario of a rapid pubertal development, which is recent onset and normal bone age. So, do you think this could be CH? Maybe people can put up. TV is less, SPN is more. So, this could be a peripheral. And then this could this be CH. Maybe you can you will then put on the QA. Or what's important from a bone age chronological age perspective? What do you get out there? Uh, sir, sir? Since the bone age is uh, same as the chronological age, that means the it is a very recent onset and there is no sufficient time has been given for the bones to grow. So definitely we are dealing with a rapid onset uh, puberty, sir. Yes. So we are getting clues. Dr. Aisha is talking about testosterone tumor, uh, adrenal carcinoma, CH, unlikely Dr. Anju. True. So this is very, very unlikely to be CH because otherwise the bone age should have been 11 or 12 by this time when they come to us. So this is definitely a peripheral precocity as Dr. Vedita is talking about, most likely a tumor. So this is... So uh, we, have to, uh, we have to go for uh, adrenal imaging. And the 17 OHP levels were normal and uh, the CT adrenal show there was a large adrenal carcinoma. So again, a big message is that if you have rapid onset development, think tumor. So rapid development is unlikely to be because of something like a hematoma. That's usually very early. It will be rapid, but not something with somebody was normal it's in six years and suddenly you have a development happening. So it has to be a peripheral form, either a HCG producing tumor or this could be a adrenal tumor. Mm -hmm. Carry on. So the patient was dealt with uh, surgery followed by chemotherapy. Three years old boy, uh, concerned regarding the early puberty and slight increase in testis size. The SPL was 8 cm and testicular volume of 4 ml. So how do you correlate? Because now I think the most important clinical clue is how much is your penile size and how much is testicular size. So what do you expect the testosterone level at this SPL? Sir, for this uh, SPL of 8, it, the testosterone must uh, must be around uh, 100, sir. Yes, so it, it won't be 20, 30. It has to be at least 100 because as much growth has happened. So do you think this testicular volume of 4 can explain that? No, sir. Uh, for testicular volume of 4, the testosterone has to be around 10 to 20, sir. 
Yeah. So, so what are the options? So yes, Dr. Vedita has talked about testosterone more than 100, which makes sense. So this is something else again. So yes. what do you think is the possibility? So definitely we are not dealing with central precocious puberty. Then yeah. we have to look for the peripheral pu uh, yeah. precocious puberty. Uh, so we have done uh, imaging. Adrenal imaging was normal. And uh, LH, FHs were undetectable, obviously. 17 OHP levels and uh, HCG levels were within normal limits. So all the things are normal. So in this scenario, what is the possibility now in a very, very early onset child who doesn't have that much testicular enlargement? Maybe people can put it on the Q&A as well. So testotoxicosis, Dr. Anju is mentioning absolutely right. Hypothyroidism would be extremely unlikely because there you will have enlarged testis with no pubic hair growth and testosterone will not be high. You haven't mentioned testosterone levels, but it was very, very high. Yes, so this is a apparent LHX state and genetics will review the diagnosis. This patient was a case of LSG receptor mutations and he was managed with antiandrogens and uh, anti uh, estrogen. Yeah. A five years old boy presented with early puberty, SPL8 and TVO4. So again, a similar sort of scenario as you were mentioning. As a previous case, now we, Dr. Vivek has mentioned MAS in the last case. Now you have given a clue here that there is multiple cafe on his spot. So this will obviously be a Macune Albert syndrome in this yeah. scenario. Yeah. And there were also bony changes in the X-rays. This is the clinical picture of the patient who had uh, multiple cafe spots with irregular margins. So definitely we are dealing with a peripheral uh, precocious puberty and the case was of uh, uh, Macune Albert syndrome. So now whether this is NF1 or MAS, so what do you think? Uh, people can put it on the chat box. Of course, when it is because of NF1, you expect the testicular volume to be higher, sir. So this is going to be a central precocious puberty. And the type of cafe oil spots are also more likely to be uh, that of macular right, rather than that. Yeah. Carry on. So we are going to do some fact check. So this is uh, true and false. So uh, the first question is, most boys with precocious puberty have some underlying cause. So is it quickly, true or false? So quickly you can write Y or N. Y for yes and N for you. So Dr. Vedita is saying true. Dr. Vivek, Dr. Anju, everybody is saying yes. True. Next question. The second question is, uh, precocious puberty with enlarged testis suggests uh, peripheral precocious puberty. Yes. So I think this is the crux of whatever we talked till now. So Dr. Vivek is saying no. And uh, I think we've got so many falls. So this is, I think, the key message which is going out. And the most important thing is testicular volume, which is important. Yeah. Uh, LH of uh, point, 0 0.2 suggests central precocious puberty. Yes. So That's I think true. this again, a lot of people are talking about yes. Dr. Aisha, Dr. Vedita, Dr. Vivek, Dr. Anju. Recommend uh, MRI brain in boys with CPP. So do we want to do it for everybody with CPP in boys? I think this again is a very, very important message that we gave that since the likelihood of pathology is more, we should go ahead and do an MRI in most cases. Yeah. Uh, generous analogs are treatment of choice in central precocious puberty. I think this again is a clear cut message that we discussed in details in that regards. Yeah. FSH is a better marker of pubertal onset. So FSH is a better marker? No. So as we discussed, yes. LH has a significant rise which happens. FSH does not rise that much in that perspective. Yeah. A low dose radiation causes precocious puberty. So this is something which is important. So if we give high dose radiation, we would have knockout of the complete puberty. If you give around 18 gray or something, you will have precocious puberty. So Dr. Vivek has mentioned yes. Dr. Vedita also mentioned yes. So we are getting a lot of messages going on. Hypothyroidism causes precocious puberty in boy. So that's a controversial question. Now, what do you mean by precocious puberty? If you say testicular volume enlargement, then the answer is yes. If you talk about high testosterone or pubic hair growth, the answer will be no. So I would take mostly no as a correct answer. But yes, if you talk about testicular volume, so you will have a, a mirror image of one way Groomback syndrome in that regard. Yes. Yeah. Suspect adrenal tumor in case of uh, rapid development of puberty. So, yes, that's a very, very important message. So, if you have anybody who has who was normal six months ago has started precocious puberty, I'll be most worried about that case and get our adrenal imaging if the LHFSH is low, testosterone is high. So, again, Dr. Anju, Dr. Aisha, Dr. Vivek talking yes 
in that regard. So carry on. Consider uh, testotoxicosis. If we have low levels of uh, LHFSS, we have uh, normal adrenal uh, imaging. We have normal 17 OHP, DOC. So all World Cup is normal. Do you think of testotoxicosis? Yes. So I think these 10 points that you have mentioned are clearly the key messages which were there. So the most important thing is to look at the testes, the LH levels, and then you decide about do not stop at making central or peripheral. You have to reach the final diagnosis, get an MRI done. For adrenal, get a CT done. For HCG tumor, get a CT done on the head, the abdomen, and other aspects as well. So